train on that data, then you can validate that data based on a couple of different pieces. So you can do regression analysis, or you can do branching or force analysis. I mean, you name it, and it spits out your model that then you can use in your application. It's really terrific. That's pretty cool. Really cool. So where do you, where do you, I mean, I assume you can get a data feed into that? Well, yeah, I mean, that's right, You, yeah. Yeah. Or however you wanna bring it in. I mean, right, right, right. You don't, you don't do machine learning, machine learning on a real-time data feed because that's probably already processed. What you do is you train your data to then look at new information and use that to understand what consequences are from your new information. I, I should say it that way. So you could you could put in like um, two thousand years of climate data, and then you say, okay, show me do a regression analysis and show me trends, and then here's new information. Like here's my here's I want to go outside tomorrow. Will I get a sunburn? That's the question you ask it. And then the machine language, the machine learning will say, well, the probability is, you know, pretty much 99% you'll get a sunburn if you're out for more than this amount of time. Because based on all the data that's come up, it will be sunny. We will do these predictions about it. So that's kind of how it works. Now, what's this called again? This, well, it, it's core ML. Uh, it's, it, it, it's the interface to it that we had talked about a second ago on CoreML. So um, it's a part of Xcloud? Yeah, if you, it's, so this this interface is called CreateML, which which is oh, a wonderful yeah, part of that. You don't have to code a lot of that stuff, bringing in data and building the model that does it here for you pretty easily. So we'll do this, I'll, I'll get some data and we'll build a little app that, that handles this kind of stuff and make some predictions. It's just really neat. Anyway, the same thing works with images. Uh, all sorts of goodies. Pretty much so. Well, that's that is pretty easy to figure out. Yeah. yeah so what I want to show you, I just have to experiment more. But then what we can do is work walk through like a sample data set. We'll just take I don't know, ten thousand records or something, and then we'll just do some. Kind of prediction analysis. I mean, so Annette, this kind of thing, like, for example, if we built a cookie app that just said, "Hey, what's the predictability of cases um, of COVID nineteen in the Amarillo College area?" Yeah. In the timeline of that, we just we just pull in that real data, but we don't pull it into the app in real time. That's why I'm trying to make that distinction. Although I'm thinking I'm failing. Right. I, I understand that. But you could also tweak it. And I'm just thinking of like demographic data if you're doing projections on population uh, changes and stuff. I mean, that'd be, I mean, I got a lot of data you could put in there. So. Well, really well, because you could tweak it based on different, um, you know, different uh, immigration rates and things like that. Yeah, just just we're not displaying the data. Where the, the the calculation is, the machine is learning from that data and giving us new predictions based on that model. I guess that's the distinction. Hold on, I got to say goodbye to my daughter because she's leaving now. So, bye, bye daughter. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> we'll see you. So Carrie, you torture yourself with clear, two-sided. Oh my God! Jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> yes. And that's well, entertainment. That <laughs> can we can we do a core ML thing to figure out her puzzle? <laughs> there you go. I had to take some pieces out yesterday because I figured out they were wrong. So. Oh, that's See? worse than to go backwards. Yeah. That's funny. I have a lot less to do than usual at the with the quarantine, so got to do something. Mm. Already homeschooled and worked from home, so those aren't new. <laughs> I'm just not going anywhere. <laughs> well, you keep it pretty busy doing that. Yeah, in small bursts. Yeah. 
Jerry, what are your hobbies? I can't hear you. I un I muted when I wanted to unmute. Um, I mostly love to cook, and which is terrible right now because I have no one to feed um, <laughs> except for my husband and I. And we're trying desperately not to put on the quarantine fifteen. Yeah. So that's uh, that's been a little bit challenging, but. Um, that's, if I were going to have a hobby, that would be it. And coming up with, you know, other fun and new ideas, different businesses and different ways to approach business. One thing I'm working on right now is, uh, partnering with some real estate related professionals. We're going to, I'm going to start next week, putting out a series of videos that's talking about the current real estate market, um, how COVID is affecting what they're doing. So I'm going to have lenders and title companies and inspectors, that type of thing, and um, spend some time with them chatting and kind of getting um, their take on what they think the coming market's going to look like. I've attended a couple of webinars this week that have been talking about current market and what it may look like after. So it's pretty interesting to to kind of follow that and see how things are going and, and what it looks like is it is it i mean i'm assuming it's really hurt in the real estate market we are typically um april may are our kind of our hottest months we we have more uh listings we have more people looking to buy because everybody wants to have all of that done before the summer is over so that their kids start school all of that kind of thing right now it's more like a november december market which are kind oh. of our first months. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, it just is. And you got to be really sort of creative and house showings and open houses and all of that kind of stuff. Cause you can't, you know, you can't just open up a house and have 50 people tromp through in a day. Yeah. So lots of, lots of virtual and video and all of that kind of stuff going on. So we've got, we have a house down the street that had a, I mean, it had a pending contract and then they pulled the bail because the business they're in isn't, you know, isn't going to be stable right now. So they're like, yeah, we just really can't do this right now. So, And, and that's a lot of what we're seeing. Um, one of the webinars I was on had the, the CEO of the California Association of Realtors on it. And his concern was the same thing I've kind of been talking about for a bit was, we have to really be careful to keep control of the lending market because the, the inclination is to want to go ahead and lend to people because things will get better. Right. But we have no way of knowing what better looks like. And so the last thing we want to do is create another 2008 yeah. where we have people in homes that they can't afford. And then we have a whole rash of foreclosures and things like that which Amarillo, as I understand it, we weren't here then, but it was a little bit immune to that just because of the industries here and the way, but this time that won't be the case. Right. So where were you then? Uh, we were in Northern California at that point. So we were actually almost a beneficiary of that because we almost bought a house out in Northern California. It was a gorgeous, huge house and it was on the market for, I think 150 or something like that. Oh wow! Um, but it was it, it was smart that we talked ourselves out of it because eventually it just became so unmanageable there. I don't know that we would have ever been able to actually sort of sell after we bought it, you know, because the yeah. market there, whew, it's crazy. It wasn't, but a couple of years after that, I saw a house that was literally propped up in the front by two four by fours. I mean, the whole house was leaning and the porch was propped up and they were asking $150,000 for that house. Oh my God. Every little thing. I mean, it, it was the only thing I could figure is you buy it and you build another house on there, but the market out there is just crazy. It's oh, yeah. so nuts. Yeah, I would have never been a realtor out there. I could have never, because I couldn't ask people to pay the kind of money they ask for houses out there. My conscience wouldn't let me sleep at night, you know? When I was out there during the crash, um, the first crash, the 08 crash, 
a half a tool shed, basically the worst house in South Lawn was three hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah. It's it's bad, bad, bad. It's so expensive. So I like I said, I could have never been a realtor out there because I there's just no way I could have slept at night for that. Here I at least try to, you know, keep people within their means. Yeah. So, so Mark, daughter, is, oh, go ahead. Hmm? What's that? Oh, Megan. Megan. She was she was here from school and going back to school. So she's isolated in her apartment, isolated in her car, and isolated here, and back in her car, back in her apartment. <laughs> but yeah, she wanted to go back. She had to she had to give her plants water. But we were playing some righteous Mario Kart. And I have to tell you guys, we were playing it last night on the, the Switch, the Wii Switch, and my controller is just vibrating and vibrating. And I said, why is my controller vibrating? The whole time is vibrating. And I thought, something's wrong. So, so I'm thinking of all the possibilities. No, the, the Wii, the, when we were playing Mario Kart, the screen is blocked into four places, and I'm looking in the wrong one. So I'm trying to play, but Megan is driving, but I'm trying to make her go. And I say, it's just not working. This is this is drifting too much. This is broken. And finally, Alex says, bro, bro, that's not you, bro. No, what? And and so we did the instant replay because they have that now. And it just sees me taking off. I run into a wall. And I'm just hitting the wall the whole game. And my controller is vibrating so I'm on the wall. So I laughed so hard. I thought I was going to pass out. It was getting dark around my eye, so I was getting dizzy. I mean, I was howling. And Megan said the next day, you know, I was laughing so hard I kind of peed. <laughs> you know, passing out when you laugh is a real thing. Bill has a condition that if he laughs too hard, he will go straight out. Really? Laughter syncope. Yeah. He, he just... So we have to be really careful. It's like if it's a helmet worthy movie, like if it's a really funny movie, mm -hmm. you gotta put the helmet on and the protective gear because he will go out. No uh, Richard Pryor stand up, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. And no funny stuff while he's driving at all. He, you know, I mean, there are stories of him waking up on a treadmill face down because he was reading something so funny that when he had a walking treadmill desk. He was reading that Lutefist thing that I sent you, and he woke up and his head was just on his treadmill <laughs> because he passed out from laughing. Ah, it's, ah. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I love my husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can hear my husband Sunday because his podcast, our podcast, comes out on history of pandemics. So, oh yeah, send send us links for that. Oh, it's just my podcast. It comes out at three o'clock on Sunday. So. Okay. Okay, Mark. Yes. Tell us what you were te telling us. Or are you done telling us that? Uh, no, I just wanted to show you. It's really, really cool. Um, and I think applying it to images, really neat, especially when you tie it into different kind of apps you want to make. A lot of reasons, like show me different clouds, take a picture of a cloud, then we can do this image stuff through core ml make predictions and say hey these are the kind of clouds that might be rolling in because of the probability i mean all sorts of great stuff is really neat really neat but i need to spend more time uh figuring it out cool because it was just really it, it it's one of those things where i go down the rabbit hole and i think what the heck and then i'm making up my own data and then pulling in other stuff so the probability of zombies occurring is 1.2 percent no so I was um, doing an experiment also on some of the stuff that we'd worked on before. You remember a while ago we were doing the list of stuff, the, doing like checklists and things? Mm -hmm. Well, so we could talk about some of that um, if you guys want to. It depends on what you want to do. I know we were going to make our Mad Libs app. I don't know if that was really working great for us last time. I'm not sure. You tell me what you guys want. Uh, where did we end up on that? Did you, the Mad Libs? We just ended up with putting text into a text. We we put the stuff together, the state variables together, but that was about it. We can do some. 
Awesome. We're going to do some other things. Oh, what I want to get to, the whole reason I was getting it to the core ML stuff is because of the JSON feeds and how I'm tying that stuff in. So, But I'm, I'm getting a little too fancy for my pants on it. So I don't want to go backward of how we display the information first so we can pull the stuff from the JSON feeds. But that got me back to the state variable, which got me back to binding, which is what we were talking about. So whatever you guys want to do. We could we could look at that again. We could look at the list of stuff again, just rudimentary stuff if you've forgotten. Whatever you'd like. Is it different in the in this version of Xcode though? You mean lists? Yeah. Creating lists. Is it it's different yeah. in Swift UI? Yeah. I can show you what that means if you'd like to see. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Okay, we'll go backward a little bit. Let me bring up a demo. Oh, this or demo. Um, I'm not sure how if this is working. What's did that? You by any chance to the, the where we left off? Did you by any chance upload that to GitHub? No, I completely did not. I will. I will do it. I, don't know if I, can, I, I just don't remember how far I got. I was having a stupid problem. Well, let's just go backward a step then, and maybe this will help us, because maybe we want to do fold Mad Libs into a list and make a list of the words. Maybe that's it. It just depends. It's it just depends. So let me uh, close this, stop this, do this. I'll just make a quickie new project here. And I'm going to call it <laughs> iLists. Lists. Not lisps. Lists. Uh, Swift UI project. Save it to the desktop. And then I will share my screen. Okay, hide this, push this over, make my text bigger so you can see it. And presentation. You guys will see that okay? Yeah. All right. So we know the whole, oh, let me resume this so you can see my preview. Hello, world. Hmm. Drag it over. OK. So here's my hello, world business. Normal stuff that we've seen before. Um, so. Remember that if we wanted to just make a list of stuff, I'm going to take out this text of hello world. All we have to do is use the list. And, and then inside of list, we need something. So I'll just do this. Um, learn Swift. We've used that example before. And how about um, Aikido master, because that's next. And also social distancing. Hmm? Hard to do with social distancing. Yes. But watch, I'll I will Somewhere. Live streaming is on. Get it. <laughs> Allegedly. 
No, put it after the other thing. Here? Yeah. I don't know. Well, that worked. <laughs> it's a good guess. Look at that right there. Yeah. Wow. Let's do this uh, up here as well. Yes, because it is our special character. It says, look out, something's coming up. So, jolly well done. Yay. Right. Okay, so we've got this, a list of stuff here. I could quote somebody and say, it's amazing how I know so much about these things, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, was, that was just luck. <laughs> All right. So we got our we got our little list here of stuff. Now one of the problems is going to be this. I'm going to copy this paste, and I'm going to paste it again, and I'm going to clean it up. Oops, that's not yeah, clean. It up. <laughs> I cleaned it up. Okay. So I've got a list here, but I've got this thing: extra arguments of position 11, 12, 13. 14. And if you guys remember, we can't have more than 10 items in a list. We get 10. So it maxes out. So we're going to have to figure out how to do that, how to fix that in a second. But first of all, let's let's put this all together inside of something, a container. And that container will be our navigation view. The reason we use that, of course, is so we can tap something and make something work and and then we'll have a little screen up here at the top. So if you remember how to do that, there is a thing. If I if I command click list, I can embed in different things, like embed in a list, embed in H stack and V stack. But there is an, another one that says embed in navigation view. So we just have to do that by hand. So I'll just say navigation view. And then I'm going to have to add another dude down here at the bottom. I'll clean it up. And what that does is it gives me this gap. See that gap up here in the top of the list? Yes. That's That tells me that we're in this navigation view. We just haven't put a title there. But now we still have the same problem. We can't have more than 10 items in one list. But we I buried it into this thing called navigation view so we can do some other stuff with it. And one of the things that we can do is at the end of the, so if I double click this little curly quote, this is the list. And then this is the navigation view. And in between these two, I wanna, I'm gonna modify that navigation view by doing dot, uh, I think it's navigation view title. And I'll just put things to do. So this modifier right here, this navigation bar title, the curious thing about this guy is it it works on modifying the navigation view, but if you put it, if I take it out here, and if I put it here, like modifying navigation view, it won't work. If I put it after the curly bracket here, it won't work. So it has to modify in a certain part of the view. So what we're actually doing is we're modifying the list in the navigation view, kind of technically. But if I put it as part of list, it won't work. Because I'm not I'm modifying the views inside. It's a weird thing. If I put it here, it will work. And that's just a curious thing. So as we're as we're building stuff. The navigation bar title, it doesn't care where it lives as long as it's part of whatever the information is in the modification. But that's a crummy place to put it because it doesn't make you think, hey, that's modifying the text learn Swift. Really, it's not. It's modifying the, the navigation, the whole list view. So instead of putting it there, I'm just going to put it down here. So that's kind of a weird dude on that. Of course, we can modify, you know, if we if we modify the text, that's easy, right? We can command click, and we can go to the inspector, and we could do some kind of modification like this. And and then inside of you can see it. I'll do another modification so we can yeah. see it even better. Do um, green. So you see how that only that part of the 
the list is modified. Let me hide this so you can see it better. So only learn Swift is modified. We've only done that. That's it. So that's hard coded. That's hand done. That's crummy. We don't want to do that. Stuff either. Okay. So I got rid of that thing. So this is. So now we have this. Uh, what we can do, and this is we we did this in one of our meetings at the at the palace before, is we built these little sections inside of our stuff. So um, let's, for example, I'm going to, um, so say I have things to do. One of the groups is things I actually need to do, say around the house or something. And another part of the list is things to watch, TV shows. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to list and I'm going to make a section. Section. It's the same thing. The section has the curly bracket and I'll need to close the section down here. So just shove it there. And I'm going to make a section. Actually, you know what? Let me get rid of that because I'm going to close that bracket here, I think. So this area right here, this is one section. And then I'm going to make another section, section. This will be the other section. Now, right now, that doesn't mean much. If I run it, build it, it just looks the same. We've do, I've set it up into different sections, but I haven't done anything with it. So in the section itself, I can give it a header. So if I come over here and I say header, and then I'll just slap in some text and I'll say things around the house. And down here in this section, say header, text. Shows to watch. All right. Wunderbar. So uh, I don't know. Is the things around the house? Uh, uh, whatever. But anyway, now I'm going to take this Watch the Good Fight business. And I'm going to put this down here so it makes more sense. And up in here around the house. Vacuum. That's something I gotta do. I also have to clean mud from carpet from the dog. Uh. So, all right. So that's things around the house, and then down here, watch this, watch this, and the beauty of copying pasting. I'm going to say, watch hard. And watch. Oh, Westworld, yeah. And finally, watch Don Oliver. But well, apparently, I got stuff I got to watch. Okay, so I've got these two things now. Um, on my list. Do you guys see all that stuff? Yeah. Okay. The thing, though, about this is this is this kind of, what is it, little grade area, shows to watch. That's the default uh, style. We can style that. So down below the navigation bar title, I'm going to add list style. And the cool thing about list style is we can make our own style here with our own, say, uh, we'll make a struct of different styles. Or I can just pick the group list style, which is one of the default behaviors. And when I do that, oops, try that again. What did I do wrong? Ah, sorry. Oh, yeah, uh, group list style is a method. I need that. Ah. There we go. So when I add that, this is one of the default Swifty iPhone kind of things that you'll see. 
So we don't have to do much to change this, although we could come in and make our own list style with just setting up whatever we'd like, which is kind of neat as a just a method. So uh, so that's that's kind of what we looked at before. One other thing um, is that um, if I still have one, two, three, four, five, So if I have, I've got to copy and paste more so I can get up to 10. So far, so good. I got 10 over here. Then if I add another one, text, um, empty, I'll just say, um, wash the pizza pan. So I have to make pizza tonight. So I'm still going to get the same error, right? I've got this extra argument and call, which is number 11. So the, the way we solved this before, we had our navigation view, our list, our section, and then down here within section, I made a group. And group is the way that we can avoid this problem. Of course, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna group these two pieces. So once I put these in a group, Then the next group, the next list of text uh, appears here with no problem. And now I can also, I can make a group for those or leave them alone. It just depends on how many values I have. So. <laughs> group. Group, come on me. <laughs> so, yeah, last night, okay, we were playing a game uh, called Blockbuster, uh, named after the uh, now defunct uh, video store, right? But it was a lot of fun and and you have, um, it's about guessing movies and it's a lot of, I can guess a movie in one word or I can do act, it's a lot of fun. But anyway, we had movies, you do a head to head round and it says, and you play one on one versus somebody. And one of the, the, the cards said movies about war. So we're, I'm going back and forth with Megan, back and forth, movies about war. And finally I hit the buzzer and I said, saving Ryan's privates. And everyone just uh, laughed and laughed at me. And I said, what? <laughs> yeah, and then Suzanne said, "What is that? The porn version?" I said, "What? What?" Because I'm saying it so fast. <laughs> wah, wah. All right. So if you scroll on that, does it show the other part? Yeah, let me uh, do it in the preview area here, so I don't have to go to the simulator. It shows all the things together, but groups don't make a delineation as sections do. So yeah, can you see the, there, mm -hmm. there you go. Okay. Yep. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. So that's super. Now, of course, this is all not how we'd ever want to do it, right? We'd want to do it in a different way. Um, and I would do it sort of like this. So I would take the, um, uh, in the struct up here in content view. And of course, this is not how we'd want to do it in a real app either. We'd split it into different uh, different pieces instead of putting it all in content view. That's our model view controller thing we've discussed before. But here I'll just put things in the checklist. And I'll make it an array instead. So here's learn Swift. I'll pop that in here. Is this? And you guys might remember this when we did the um, the restaurant thing. Mm -hmm. Same kind of deal. We can actually recreate that restaurant uh, if you like. We could do that one day with Swift UI. It's so much easier than doing tables. That's why I really wanted to focus on this uh, for our future development because that's where everything is going. We'll we'll know a lot more at. Uh, Worldwide Developers Conference coming up pretty soon. That's all going to be online. Can we watch it? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I assume, Kenny, you probably know better than I do, but I'm assuming that it's all going to be pretty open. Um, yeah, they got the wrap up. Um,
What was that? I think they got, um, let's see what they've done to the app. Well, while Kenneth is looking now this time, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to, I'm going to uh, wipe out a lot of this stuff here. Oh, um, of the section. And here. Yes. I'm just, I'm assuming they're not charging a fee, though. No, they're not. Yeah, it's in the Apple developer app. Can you drop that information in our chat? Our group chat, group text? Um, let me try to link to it. Well, I don't mean you right this second. Well, forget if I don't do it right this second. Um. So they're doing the whole developer uh, worldwide develop the w dub in the uh, in the app this time well what I'm doing right now while I'm talking is I'm referencing the array and I have a lovely copy and paste that I've grown so fond of wait where my guy go Hey. Ah. Sorry. So what I've done is I've just, I've done the same thing that we had here, except I'm taking all this out of the array. Why don't you just use a count command there? Yeah, that's what I'll do next. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to take you guys back from the beginning of everything, just in case. We could just jump right into that if you like. I'll show you this, though. This is kind of cool. If I wanted to make something just instantly kind of change. So do you remember when we were doing all that kind of stuff on, um, when we were doing lists uh, on queuing and dequeuing and back and forth and all that? Really painfully easy this time. So let's say that um, instead of um, number one here, I'm going to do eight. So instead of, um, wait a minute. Become my keto, yeah, that's a good example. Become my keto master. So what I'm going to say is here, I'm going to use the um, on tap gesture, on tap gesture, and I'm going to put it in there. Um, oops, this the thing. Things in the checklist. And I'll just say it's number eight. Nope. I'm going to say number one now equals I am the master. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do is tap that and have this reflect that. But I get this error. Oh, there are two errors in here. One is the self error. Because I'm, I'm technically in a closure, I have to reference uh, like that. But the other error is the more significant one cannot assign through subscript self, it is immutable. And this is my question to you all. How do I fix that? So Annette, you've been the champion so far today. Yeah, I'm going to hand off to somebody else here because I don't, um, it's not dot self, is it? Uh, no, we've, so we've already done self. The, the question I have is I want to change when I tap become a keto master, I want that to change to I am the master. 
I should, I should just say I am the Aikido master, so it gives me some context. So this goes back to the problem of state. Since I can't self in an array is immutable right here, I can't really change certain things, mainly because up here in things in the checklist, I haven't set a state of all this stuff. So I'm going to run into all these problems because remember state state defines the interface and I'm changing the interface or what I want to do is change the interface. So what I have to do up here. So above that you have to put a state. Yeah. And we, you know, we, we've done private before, you know, for this example, let's just not make it confusing. So. There you go. Hmm? There you go. It cleared, cleaned it up. Yes. But the question now is, will it work? Let's find out. I'm going to tap become Aikido master. I am the Aikido master. Ha ha ha. Yes. Very good. Cool. So that's the issue, how state kind of affects these things. Just, just keep in mind that when we talk about state, um, it's always deriving the interface. Now, what Ken has said before is exactly right. What we do instead is we would just loop through um, our stuff instead of doing this one by one. And the way uh, the way that kind of works, just real quickly, is all this stuff down here. I'm going to get rid of it. There's a new. We've done this a little bit. There's this new command called for each. And for each loops through. So I'll use the, the command for each. Then I will loop through my array, which is called things in the checklist. Now, one of the problems is I have to give it some information so it knows where to go. And this information is the ID. And right now it's called dot self. And that just says <coughs> to Swift, okay, I'm going to give a certain, each one of these things in the array has a self ID. And as I loop through it, I'm going to keep track of that. Now, later on, we'll use um, a different method called, um, I just blanked out what we call it. Anyway, it's, it's a protocol and we'll use the protocol instead. So when we do this, I have to say item in and text. Yes. And that cleans up significantly. So right now, this is doing exactly what we just did by hand. But I wanna, I wanna talk about a couple things here. It could be confusing. So for each, this is the name of the array. This, don't worry too much about this weirdness right now because we will change this um, later on when we use a UUID. Uh, but this is the, this right now is just Swift keeping track of which one is which. Now this item, is just a made up word. It doesn't have to be item. It could be bagel in, but then I have to re refer to that as bagel right here. And as I do that, then it just says, okay, at the ID of dot self, I'm gonna keep track of this, this little variable I just created and I'm just calling it bagel in text of bagel. But we said item before, it could be X in X. But uh, I hate using X because that just looks scary and nobody understands it. So I'm just saying item, item, and item. So it's saying for each thing, for each of these items in here with the ID. So the dot self is ID number one, ID, or not ID zero, ID one, ID two. Then I'm saying item in, it's kind of a backward way, item in things in the checklist and then put the text and then show me that particular item, which should be zero, learn Swift, become Aikido master and all that. So that's, this is, this is the information, the data, the array. This is the kind of the object ID, the fingerprint of each item. And this is the actual thing that we're working on inside of the block looping through it. That uh, 
I hope that makes sense. Do you remember four four in loops? So if I if I had a little loop like this for um, a thing in uh, an array and do stuff, so it would just loop through its made up word in this array. Do these things, which loop and loop and loop. It's the same thing, except in this case, this word is item over here. And in an array, this is this word right here. But it's pretty much identical. Okay. Yeah. So. Yay. That's. I'm sorry Mark's missing this, because I think he would like this. You can go back and watch it later. Oh, are you record? Can you record this? Yeah, if you stream it to YouTube, it automatically records it. Oh, but I mean, can you can you record this to your desktop if you're running it, Mark? Uh, there's Mike a Boy. Mike there's, Boy. there's a record. Yeah, yeah there's a start recording thing. Yeah, it says upload to Dropbox. I don't know about the desktop. Okay, but I mean, you can record it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, this is probably the best one we've looked at. I think it is, at least. I mean... You mean this example? No, the meeting software. Oh. Yeah. Well, if it works for you guys, I mean... You, you oh, know. I love it. Okay. It's, I mean, it's to me, it's like Zoom, but it's, I mean, I'll, I prefer it much better to group FaceTime. So I guess we can continue with this example and we could bring in stuff through like a, a data feed or something later on if you want to try that. Yeah, whatever you like. I'm down with the data feed idea as usual. Okay. Kenneth, what are you wanting data feeds for? I want to be able to pull in uh, the goal is to be able to put out an app that I can hook up to a WordPress website and basically make a native iOS app that'll and use WordPress for a back end is the first thing. Okay. But uh, I'm also working on a, well, basically a sensor array and I want to be able to pull in data from a bunch of sensors and do stuff with it. I'm probably going to build part of that this weekend. I actually got parts. Parts? You got parts? I got microcontrollers. Yay! Are you dead? They came in? Yeah, I got some uh, ESP32 microcontrollers. That what's, I'm play that, with. what's that gizmo you used when you helped me on my network that you... Mm. If it was live at the other end of my house. My what? You know, you had this little gizmo that you hooked up to. Oh, well, we were just testing the cables. Camera. Internet. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's just a cable, te a continuity cable continuity tester. Okay. Plug like it in one side and it blinks a lot on each uh, conductor until it finds a mistake. And I just thought it was cool. <laughs> You're a beautiful thing. I mean, that thing saved me more than. <laughs> well, I've had about 20 years that I'd uh, wired every Ethernet cable I'd ever made wrong. <laughs> what did you do? What did you do wrong? I swapped the blue wires. They're not really used. Uh, the blue pair. Uh -huh. But it, it, you don't have, I'd, I'd had it going um, green, white, blue, white, blue. And then you should never have a, green, uh, a color white and a solid together. So it's green, white, uh, blue, you know, it should be green, white, blue, white, green, yeah. Hmm. 
but those are the two wires that aren't used in an Ethernet connection. So every one of I know I didn't know that I'd wired all of them literally from twenty years wrong. <laughs> more showed me that I did, and uh, I still want him dead for that. You know, when I worked yeah. at Anderson, we had a big years. <laughs> we had a big project we were doing in our warehouse, and um, so I had this whole controller server system up in this top area on the second floor. All these people working on the floor of the warehouse, and we were getting terrible throughput. I mean, it was we were losing data packets left and right. It was awful. I couldn't understand it. That's we're so close to each other. We're not going across the world. What's going on? Well, they used um, unshielded. Well, they used Ethernet cables, but they wrapped it around an unshielded power source going up to the ceiling. So we're yeah. getting about ninety-eight percent packet losses. <laughs> so stupid. We we're not even supposed to bundle Cat Six together. Yeah. We're supposed to like take a group of four of them and bundle that and the next four of them but these big bundles will cause crosstalk also mm -hmm. so crosstalk the worst thing in the world you remember that motor map crosstalk <laughs> that's how old i am <laughs> <laughs> i've used that in the 80s i think well I have to go because I have a um, the 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 group I'm a mentor for um, with the National Science Foundation. We have a call in about half an hour, so I have to read some stuff and be smart. Well, I'm sure you'll pull it off. <laughs> pull it off. Oh, so is that your backup? <laughs> you do, just take some clothes off. Yeah, that's right. It's so cold, though. I don't want to do any of that. I'm, I'm really cold last night yeah oh, man i was out in it what were you doing what were you doing out there hey, I, I i declared the covid over <laughs> cute blonde trunks covid every time you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you're cover covert it i'm cover it yeah you're cover it <laughs> Well, y'all have a good weekend. Okay, you too. Oh, we will. Y'all have a good weekend too. Enjoy the podcast with my husband. I can hardly wait. I can really looking forward to this. Who's in with him? Is he just sitting there doing a single solo deal, or listen, I, I, I'm hiring Darwin, my or middle son, to edit them for me, um, mostly. And he uh, sent me one yesterday, and he's like, "I was like Darwin, don't." I mean, it's he just he never shuts up and i was like you need to insert some music and and i've been doing this this covid series and he's like but mom i haven't put any music in any of those in in interstitially i was like you got to in this because it's it's dense and he just talks non-stop about pandemics and stuff it's like go go float some music in it so i'm i just got the text from him for the new file so i'll i'll see if it's good but it's just me interviewing him. So, oh, okay. But it's mostly him talking. It's mostly him. Okay. Cool. I am looking forward to this. <laughs> I was thinking. I was thinking. You know, based on the conversation I had with Annette, that we could do a whole, not podcast. It needs to be video, kind of like this. But a whole series. We just call it coding for noobs, and we just we just sit there and we, and we start at the beginning, and we just crack jokes. <laughs> and we, but we talk about stuff like what's a variable like five minutes of coding at the end <laughs> yeah just coding for noobs That'd be well, great. I, think I, I think we could build our group with this because we, we're getting used to dealing with this tech you know yeah. all the time and I, I think it would be good to build our little local group or maybe expand outside the Emerald area but Yep. How are your yeah, not to extend this into your reading time? But how's your how go your classes? My classes. Your classes, Mark. Your teeth. Uh, they're they're okay. You know, like I said before, I'm having a hard time because I have to catch up to a lost semester. I mean, they they really are. That was the a whole semester of just nothing. So they're not where they need to be. Um, but we're building real things uh so yeah we have a couple of students who are always asking to have meetings on the weekends 
you know, and I need to I need to come up with a way of having tutorials with the TA system. But the problem with that is you got to be a student at the college. So like if I ask you guys, you guys want to be TAs, you have to be students. That's the problem. So I can pay you a whole hefty dollar an hour. Wow, that's, I, is that better or worse than the prison? Um, <laughs> oh, well, okay. uh, the feds told me to uh, starve this week, so I'm looking for opportunities. Yes. Okay. Starve. starve. Yeah, I went and looked for a little checky thing, and it said, we have no idea who you are. Go away. <laughs> It wasn't even that eloquent. I mean, yeah, it was, yeah. it, they could have put the middle finger in the middle of the screen and it would have said the same thing. So. I think I think we've been getting a lot of that <laughs> the past, <laughs> past few months. Yeah. Okay, I got to go so I can. Okay, uh, Y'all have a good weekend. I'll Bye. see you guys. Bye. Bye. Let me turn this off. Oh.